what's going on with the new EUV machines that are coming out of the Dutch from ASML. ASML is the company that makes the lithography machines that make high-end semiconductors possible. It's basically a machine about the size of a bus that makes a tiny little laser that operates at an accuracy that is smaller than a DNA strand and allows you to etch semiconductors at the nanometer level. EUV in its current form can go down to about three nanometers. Below that, it basically loses coherence. And so there's a new machine called a high numerical aperture that in theory can take you down to one nanometer and even below. The smaller you can etch your transistors, the more processing power you can cram onto a piece of silicon and the more powerful the semiconductor on the other side can be. EUV is a technology that's been around since 2012. It was grabbed by what was then the industry under DOG, which was TSMC in Taiwan. And over the course of the next several years, they leaped ahead of who the old industry leader had been, and that was America's Intel. Now we got the flip side. TSMC is reserving the right to maybe buy one of these new machines, the high NA machines. It is Intel that's now betting their future on the new technology, hoping that they can repeat the feat that TSMC did and once again become the world leader. They have two of those machines. They're at their Hillsborough facility. Their goal is to crank out 10,000 chips a month, which is very, very, very small scale. They're very much still in the testing phase, and it is just simply too soon to know if A, this technology will work, and B, what its effects will be is really the question here. When we went from DUV, deep ultraviolet, which was the old technology, this is what the Chinese have still, to EUV, which is now the standard for our premium chips, the nature of semiconductors changed because it wasn't just about cramming more into less space. It was making them more energy efficient, was doing things with the architecture, eventually leading to stacked chips. And so it wasn't just a linear jump. There's possibility that with high NA, we will have another non-linear jump that will leave all the chips that we make today behind. But we don't know that until we have our first mass manufacturing run. That will be at the end of calendar year 2026. Then we will have to have the industrial build out to build more of these machines. And these machines cost significantly more than a commercial aircraft. So we probably wouldn't have enough chips to matter in a way that would really move the needle technologically before 2029 or 2030. There is one other company in the world that is trying out this new technology. It's out of South Korea. It's k Hynix, which is the company that makes the best DRAM chips, those are memory chips. So what Intel does, what TSMC does, those are GPUs, those are processors, and those are important. But you have to pair it with a memory chip, and the Koreans excel at that. So as to the DRAM side, SK Hynix is an industry leader along with Samsung. They recently overtook Samsung in terms of total output, but in terms of quality, they're pretty much neck and neck. And so now one of them has DNA and one of them doesn't.